why is the right wing winning? Okay. Five bucks says the right wing is winning because the left isn't paying attention to the aspirations of white nationalists who are afraid of their bloodline being diluted. And, uh, and there's too much trans discourse. My last explicitly political video was titled Everything Normal is Right Wing, and it was a short discussion of how the extreme left has sectioned off essential parts of the common human experience and, Called it. and declared them to be right wing. In doing so, these radicals have basically assured that the average person will reject them every single time. This video is a direct continuation of that one, so I recommend you go back and watch it first if you uh... haven't already. But here's a quick TLDR anyway. To the radicals, anything normal is right-wing, because the normal upholds the status quo of liberal democratic capitalism, and they seek to overthrow that status quo. Therefore, every way in which you act normal, even if you think you're being neutral or apolitical, well, your personal behavior only reinforces the system that they want to topple. That's why, in their eyes, getting fit turns you into a right-wing jerk. You are literally Hitler if you want a family, a wife, and kids. If you enjoy old- Well, no, uh... Maybe there's something wrong with you if when you're looking for a life partner uh, to to like live with you till you die and to also be uh, responsible for raising your children into adulthood, you don't want to pick someone on the basis that they look and act like like a fetish object or, or a slave. I think I think that's that's the that's the argument is. It, it seems like you have a pretty dim view, not to say despicable view, of women if your your judgment is literally based on whether or not they measure up to an AI-generated stock image. Their eyes, getting fit turns you into a right-wing jerk. You are literally Hitler if you... Uh, it, is, it is bold, by the way, just to be clear. It is, it is bold for somebody to be taking the side of the people who would call you like assuredly dysgenic um in this in this argument Nor normal for the like these these people hate you dev these people hate you they're not normal they're not normal they 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 are obsessed with a a postcard picture and they themselves demonize anybody who doesn't measure up to that even when they don't and that includes you. You want a family, a wife and kids. If you enjoy old British TV shows, you're fostering far right sympathies. If you like Lord of the Rings or 1984. Okay, who, who published this still? Like, what is this? Hang on, let's see. This is by Sam Merriman and Chris Hastings for the Daily Mail. Okay, so I see. Uh, wow, so you're not even, you're not even going to the source. You're just, you're literally just parroting a daily mail post it didn't occur to you that maybe there's a spin on this and just just to be clear uh works i mean key texts for white nationalists and supremacists does anybody remember i like i'm i like lord of the rings i know some people some people don't don't appreciate lord of the rings as much as i do but i like lord of the rings does anybody remember from the uh the battle of pelinor fields in in movie three return of the king how literally it was European knights versus Arabs on elephants and the air literally turned to gold while they were fighting like they were in the desert or in the Mexico from Breaking Bad. I remember that. Like, you don't, you don't think that that might be, that might be pushing certain buttons for, for people who idolize a, a medieval, pre-modern, Western past and despise the barbarian hordes of Asia, you know? Our right sympathies. If you like Lord of the Rings or 1984, you're a right-wing extremist. If you want entrance exams for upper-tier schools and specialized classes for gifted kids, you've got a far-right agenda. Well, well, hang hang on, hang on. What what if, what if as, as a consequence, maybe an intended consequence, of these of these entrance requirements you are solidifying uh two things first of all the inability of people from uh underprivileged areas i places where nutrition and employment and security and stability are are scarce goods let's say 
um, from ever having access to these institutions so they can never get out of that situation, and B, removing <laughs> any conceivable investment by better off people in improving their communities as a whole by making it so that the, the fate of their children is completely divorced from that of every other citizen. If there's a Viking statue in town, it's a monument to far-right slavery. If for the record, Prevent are known for only going after Muslims and accusing them of being radical. They did nothing but a far-right dude who murdered a politician. Prevent? Was that, uh, was that an article that was shown earlier? Where was Prevent? I don't care. Toxic whiteness, toxic masculinity, whatever. Well, all of this nonsense is starting to translate into electoral victories for various right-wing parties across the world. And progressives are starting to sweat bullets. I'll probably do more in-depth dives into some of these countries at some point, but for today, let's just take a scattershot look at what's been happening. The right-wing wave seemed to begin, in terms of elections won, with the 2022 Italian election, where Giorgia Maloney became Prime Minister of Italy. Maloney's got a long history of political involvement. When she was 15 in 1992, she joined the youth wing of the MSI, Italy's then post-fascist political party. The party moderated and merged with other right-wing parties several times to form the PDL, and in 2012, the more solidly right-wing faction of the PDL split off again to create the Brothers of Italy, which Maloney currently leads. The Brothers of Italy is self-described as conservative nationalist, while its detractors call it fascist. Maloney is religious, opposed to medical euthanasia, same-sex marriage, and gay and trans parents. She supports military action to stop illegal immigration. She's right, so she's not a fascist, she's just an Italian right-winger who hates degenerates. Gotcha. Good one, Devin. Supports NATO, but is skeptical of the European Union. Brilliant. And she supported Russia until the invasion of Ukraine, where she switched to supporting Ukraine. Regardless of what you think of these positions, Maloney and the Brothers of Italy have continued to enjoy popular support among Italian voters. And generally, when you hear of her in Western media, it's usually retarded headlines like this, where lefty journalists claim that an immigrant gang problem is empowering Italy's far right, as if the far right is the problem and not the gang rapes. But I think the big high-profile win was the 2023 Argentine presidential election. President Malay is the first president in, I think, any country who explicitly identifies as a minarchist. A minarchy is a theoretical libertarian state, which only exists to enforce the non-aggression principle. Minarchists are philosophically aligned with anarcho-capitalists, but believe that a fully anarchist society would not have the necessary protections to enforce the NAP. A minarchist government, therefore, only consists of the military, the police, and the courts. This type of state has been mocked by both socialists and fascists as the night watchman state, meaning a state that only exists to prevent theft and do nothing else, using the German word Nachtwachter, which in German has a double meaning, also referring to somebody who is incompetent and stupid. The socialists and fascists use the term night watchman state to mock the liberals because the classical liberals of the early 1900s were a lot closer to minarchists than the modern social liberals of today. Yeah, they're also, they're also going into a recession, like rapidly. The point is, nobody holding this specific philosophy has ever been elected to a major office in any even semi-relevant country until Argentina. Despite how negatively he's been reported on in the Western media, he's well regarded by the Argentine people. He's sticking to his guns regarding shrinking the scope and power of the government. And frankly, he seems to be somewhat of an eccentric memester on the internet. Al sur Here, look, look, this is Malay, okay? Look at this. This is Reuters. Argentina enters technical recession as job losses mount under Malay. Argentina entered a technical recession in the first quarter of the year. This is, um, as of three days ago. Uh, official data showed on Monday, and job losses mounted amid a tough austerity drive by libertarian president Javier Millet, who is prioritizing restoring fiscal order. The South American country's gross domestic product, GDP, shrank 2.6% in the first quarter of the year versus the final quarter of 2023, the second consecutive quarter on quarter contr uh, contraction, the usual definition of a recession. The quarter marks the first full period under Malay, who took office in December after winning a shock election last year, when he often campaigned with a chainsaw as a blunt illustration uh, of his plans to slash spending a hit, a zero fiscal deficit. Um... The official uh, index statistics agency also released jobs data, which showed the jobless rate rising to 7.7% in the first quarter, up from 5.7% at the end of last year. That meant that some 300,000 newly unemployed people, uh, sorry, that meant some 300,000 newly unemployed people since the previous quarter. Triple digit inflation and the recession have hit consumers hard and hurt sales of products like beef, while Malay's spending cuts have seen state infrastructure projects halted and major job losses in sectors such as construction. So that's yeah, yeah. Okay, we'll see. We'll see how that. We'll see how that lasts, Dev.
pedazo de mierda no le podés dar ni un mil. But he's but he's normal. He 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 appreciates he appreciates backyard grilling. Y me pero me definir zurdo de mierda, que no Todos lo los que digamos los colectivistas, <risa> los que ponen digamos, o sea, esa idea. A ver, ¿por qué le pones de mierda, digamos? Okay. Porque son una mierda. I I want to I want to read this. This is this funny because he's destroying his country's economy. <laughs> You can't give shift left hearts an inch. Burn it down to the ground. Y me puede definir zurdo de mierda que no Todos los que digamos los colectivistas, los que ponen digamos, o sea, esa idea, a ver, ¿qué le pones de mierda, digamos? Porque son una mierda. O sea, vos mezclas, no, pero es que se descalifica, pero no, pero si pensás distinto te van a te van a aniquilar. Ese es el punto. Es decir, vos al zurdo no le podés dar un milímetro, porque le das un milímetro y lo tomas para destrozarte. Es, the amount of suicides that will happen as a consequence of this guy. Y usa, digo, o sea, vos no podés negociar con el zurdo. No se negocia. No se negocia con esa oh. no se negocia. Look, destroying the economy is worth it to Dev just as long as they're anti-trans, of course. Uh, Dev loves trans people. What are you talking about? He chases them constantly. There's not a single trans woman on this platform that he's not uh, flirting with in the in the chat. It's 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 a it's a known thing. O sea, porque te van a llevar it's puesto. a known thing. Also, he reversed the government ban on Dragon Ball Z, which is always good. But there's a ton of other smaller examples of this happening all over the place. In Sweden, they went the hardest on inviting immigrants in during the EU migration crisis of the mid-2010s, and as a result, have suffered a truly staggering increase in terrorist attacks, gang violence, human trafficking, and Sharia no-go zones set up in ethnic enclaves in Swedish cities. As a result, the formerly fringe, far-right populist SD party has become the official opposition, dethroning the conservative, moderate party. In the Netherlands, the 2023 general election saw the right-wing populist party, the Party for Freedom, become the largest party for the first time, siphoning voters and seats from all four main... Okay, so just, just to be clear, like, what he said, what he started this off with is, oh, uh, the first part of this video, I guess, because it's a sequel to the previous one, the reason why, like, the, 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 the left is alienating people because they are targeting normalcy, normal things that are like highly culturally specific elements of, of a culture that treats women as de facto property and non-agents in society and and things like that as as well as uh as, as well as teaching a general hatred of sort of physical difference the kind that dev is most certainly an example of um but now we move immediately to they're letting in too many brown people or too many muslims if you prefer or too many, whoever. They're the the gates. The gates are too are too wide. So, I'm actually not. Let, let me take a look at this. The, the numbers actually. Hang on. What's the approval rate of Georgia, Maloney, and Italy in 2024? It's actually 41 percent. 52 percent disapprove of her. A recent survey here. We got a statista. This is um. When is this from? Published in March this year. Okay. So, a recent survey indicates that the majority of the Italian population do not have a positive image of Prime Minister Giorgio Maloney after two years in charge. Specifically, 52% of respondents disapprove her government, whereas only 41% think positively about her performance. Um, she's the first Ital uh, female Italian head of government since the unification of the country in 1861. She was appointed by President Sergio uh, Mattarella. After that, the center-right coalition won the general election in September 2022, and her party, Brothers of Italy, uh, obtained one-fourth of the votes. However, the representation of women in Italian political institutions remains low. In the past legislature, uh, 2018 to 2022, only 36% of the members of the parliament were women, and data worsen uh, when, I should, should say data worsens, I think, when considering the number of female officials in ministerial positions, which stayed below 30% of the total. Moreover, in a survey conducted in 2021 among young Italians, one third of the respondents believed that women and girls are suffering more violence and discrimination in politics rather than in any other sector. Let's see here. The Prime Minister's Party was founded in 2012. Uh, in November of 2021, polls estimated uh, FDL collecting 19.8% uh, of the votes just behind the Democratic Party with 20.2%. The results of the 2022 elections overturned these projections, confirming the right-wing party is the nation's most voted political association. This performance highlights an impressive success of Brothers of Italy under Maloney's leadership. In fact, a series of European election surveys conducted in recent years reported her party winning only 4.4% of the voters' consent, 
Hence, in five years, the leader increased popular consensus by 21.6%. So that is true. Like, they've they've grown. But here's a question. Does this speak to the excess of leftists? Or does this speak to the, um, let's say, a, a practical benefit in cutting off... Uh, in, uh, if ethnically ethnically filtering immigration harder or, or does it perhaps speak to uh the success of right-wing propaganda under continuing uh conditions of increasing scarcity and uncertainty especially following COVID? like that 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 strikes me as something i would probably want to pay attention to mainstream parties in what western media reported as a stunning upset in Finland, there's a new right-wing president. In France, there's an election in the next few weeks, and a young, fiery right-wing populist is poised to become the next prime minister. I haven't actually looked into this. Let's see. Uh, ooh. Ooh, that's not good. That's not good at all. Let's see here. Macron, by the way, is also resented uh, for many other things. This is uh, so French election. Jordan Bardella's hometown will be voting for him. Uh, voters in the Paris suburb of St. Denis, uh, home to many immigrants and Muslims, fear the surging far right, but also resent Macron's presidency. St. Denis, uh, France. St. Denis is both the hometown of far right leader Jordan Bardella and the incarnation of everything he despises about modern France. It's one of Paris's most populous suburbs, where nearly one in three inhabitants is an immigrant. A traditional French cheese merchant, his neighbors with a halal butcher, a phone salesman, sits beside a vendor selling traditional Muslim garments, local women wearing hijabs peruse the stalls, and young office workers from the center who move to the suburbs in search of cheaper rent enjoy the trendy coffee shops. For Bardella, who stands a shot at becoming prime minister for the uh, anti-immigrant national rally after a two-round parliamentary election on June 30th and July 7th, this isn't a vision of France he embraces. Raised in St. Denis, uh... Is the, is the S silent in St. Denis? Saint Denis? Uh, Bardella has said his childhood experiences prompted him to go into politics. Quote, I've experienced to the core the feeling of becoming a foreigner in one's own country. I've experienced the Islamization of my neighborhood, unquote. He said earlier this month, on a scorching morning, only days before France's historic snap election, the main St. Denis market was abuzz with political activists touting their candidates. Every party joined the fray except one, the national rally. Quote, there's a visceral rejection of the RN here, said Louis Auxil Millard, who is running for the conservative Les Republicains uh, party. The local RN candidate can't put his face on his posters for fear of retaliation. I myself have faced some aggression when people see blue on my leaflets and associate me with the RN. <sighs> and then while the party is pulling well ahead of its competitors nationwide, St. Denis is world apart. This would be largely due to the fact that the a large part of the population is being specifically targeted for persecution or suppression, either or. Hmm. Not good. Not good. Like, here's a, here's a crazy thought. Just, just spitballing. Maybe the issue is not leftists advocating for leftist positions. Maybe the issue is a whole bunch of highly reactionary people in positions of power and wealth, like that Rathbone bozo we were looking at earlier, um, who are either uh, using their positions to throw their weight around and thus cementing in the eyes of, of a large part of the public, not all the public, but a large part of the public, an identification of, let's say, minority advocacy and uh, top-down uh, government coercion. Right. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's a, a major factor and maybe actual, like for the most part, leftists are, are not in positions of power, don't really have the ability to control the discourse at the level of major media platforms, um, and are being roundly abused by both. Um, and maybe you're playing into that dev, uh, because you're a disgusting slob, uh, who wants an easy buck and it's easy. Maybe. In Germany, the AFD, considered to be a right-wing extremist party, and not without reason, is nonetheless growing more and more popular every year. In the UK, the Conservatives, who have ruled the country for over a decade now, despite not really doing anything Conservative, are poised for a major loss, with the new Reform Party from the right chewing into their holdings. In Ireland, the far right grows more and more popular, though their elections are still a year away. In Portugal, there's right-wing electoral wins. 
In Australia, there's been no elections showing a right-wing rise just yet, though journalists are publishing articles about the terrifying rise of the far right, so we still might see it. The articles tend to come before the votes. In Canada, my home country, Trudeau has become one of our most unpopular prime ministers. Oh my god, Brianna Wu is inserting herself into the Karen Reed trial discussion, making it about herself. Does it remind her of Gamergate? Ask her if it reminds her of Gamergate. America is frankly the outlier right now. Who wins between Biden and Trump is, at this point, a toss-up, as both candidates have serious flaws. Unlike the other examples I've listed, the polling doesn't show a guaranteed right-wing victory coming up. It might happen, but it also might not. It's not clear-cut. Bro, one can see what another one's thinking of, provided that enough precise experiments have been done. That is not true. So why is all this happening? Why is the so-called far right, which is a label that certainly applies to some of these parties and candidates, but not all of them, why are they currently ascendant? Why is the tenuous alliance between neoliberal, progressive, and socialist forces currently failing all across the developed world? Well, I personally think it's because culturally they pushed way too far left. Going back to that... Or... Or how about this? What if, what if they, what if they didn't? What if, what if what actually happened is, uh, a bunch of people lied about them, got a whole lot of TV coverage, and then nobody got a chance to really push anything. Uh, they were just up against a, a media straw man, which then took their place because most of them actually don't have any power. What if that happened? Like, I, the thing that's despicable about people like this is that they will pretend like, oh, guys, I think you're making a strategic mistake. I think we need to tone things down, be a little bit more quiet, be a little bit more careful, because if we, if we give the wrong impression, we're going to spook people into switching to the right side. We need to, we need to stop challenging normal stuff. The problem is that what's completely ignored deliberately is that that display what you're what you're construing as a display of insanity that fills a slot that is still too useful to be left empty by the other side so that even if you are careful a crazier version of you will be invented anyway the difference being is you will have absolutely no control or say in it um all they need is to find one fucker who looks a little bit dumb on the telly they need one wrathbone that's it. I remember when Occupy Wall Street was going on, and there were a lot of dumb people associated with Occupy Wall Street, by the way. But I remember Sean Hannity invited one, one Occupy Wall Street person to come on and chat. Okay. In fact, I bet that's on YouTube. It might be. It might be memory hold. That's unfortunate. Damn, it's been buried. I'm sure it exists somewhere, but it's from so long ago. But like, and he was like asked, like, "Hey, do you do you want to?" Uh, do you want, do you want free healthcare? Do you want, do you want free dental? Oh, hell yeah. Do you want like, and we just ask him things. And the framing was of an idiot who is allowing the conversation to be completely controlled by someone who's just throwing them bones. Um, do you want, do you want free food? Do you want free stuff? Do you want a free house? Yeah, yeah, I do. And they're seeing this frizzy haired college guy, um, with, with like, ex uh, flamboyant looking glasses and whatnot, kind of dressed like me, um, just like nodding around. Yeah, 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 bro. And the picture is revolting to a lot of people. And so what they take from this is, wow, these people are this stupid. They, they just, they're just a bunch of, they're just a bunch of dumb losers who want free stuff. Fuck them. I'm not, I'm not going to, I, I, I actually want them to lose just, just on principle because of how, how repulsive I find them. Not really the specific thought process, but basically how it goes. Like it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Everything normal is right wing bit from before. That stuff has real electoral consequences, especially in a globalized world where culture is shared across the internet. To your average voter, normal center left policies. Oh, like but, but that works both ways, Dev. That works both ways, my greasy little friend, because if, if politics is internationalized, then you don't actually have only to contend with extremists at home. Uh, it is possible that all the right wing needs to leverage is the threat of a, of a global elite, say, or, or of uh, stuff happening on college campuses in other countries in order to cast yours as doing the same thing. And at a higher grain of resolution, they don't even need to catch people at those universities doing something crazy. They could, for example, 
just frame them without context where they look crazy without the surrounding context. So for example, there's that famous quote, I think, what was it from? Was it from, uh, yeah, here we go. Here we go. This one, famous, infamous. A lot of you will have seen this. We looked at this during our research for the, uh, the destiny debate on, uh, what that never happened because he, he ghosted from it because he's a coward, um, on whether, uh, university professors are being like fired left, right, and center because of a progressive orthodoxy on university campuses. We, we looked at, uh, this is Yale. Yeah, I was at Yale. We looked at this clip from Yale University as one such example, okay? And it, it looks pretty embarrassing. So we'll watch this and then I'll explain why it's actually not. The exception is because other people have rights too, not just Walk, walk, walk away. away. Walk, walk away. away. Walk away. Walk away. Walk away. It doesn't deserve to be listened to. Be listened to. I did not. Be quiet. For all standing people. You understand that? As your position of master, it is your job to create a place of comfort and home for the students that live in Silliman. You have not done that. By sending out that email, that goes against your position as master. Do you understand that? Then no, I stop. don't agree with that. Then, then why oh. can you accept the position? Because what I have the a oh. fired you! I have a different vision. You should step down! If that is what you think about being a master, you should step down! It is not about creating an intellectual space! It is not! Do you understand that? It's about creating a home here! You are not doing that! Okay. That's pretty embarrassing, right? Privileged college student complaining to a university professor, screaming at him in the yard about uh, about how, no, it's not about creating intellectual space at a university. It's about creating a home here. You'd probably be forgiven for finding that pretty horrendous. You'd probably be, you wouldn't like that girl very much. But here's the part that got cut out. Uh, the context of this is the professor sending around an email um, disparaging a, a group on campus for making suggestions about Halloween costumes. Don't dress in a big feathery headdress and go wallow la uh, on Halloween because that's not cool because you're, you're being deeply insulting to other people who are paying to attend here. And this professor is responsible for managing the, a housing area where that email was, where that uh, notice was circulated at the university. So it is literally his job to create a home there for those students that is comfortable and safe and not to create an intellectual space. But that pretentious oh. rat allowed that misconstrual to be circulated across the globe. And so now that girl has been hounded as a consequence of this and has been torched because she's been radically misrepresented. It took nothing. It took nothing to build that. People have built media careers off of using positions of power to invent boogeymen to then sell themselves as, as being great opposers of. Peter Bogosian never fired from his university, but pretended to be. Pretended to be squeezed out. He literally just quit because he wanted to go on a media tour and play a victim. Brett Weinstein had his job specifically protected by the university. He was under no risk of being fired. But he... He made a settlement with the university after, I think he, I think he sued them, if memory serves. And they made a condition after that, after he stabbed them in the back, after they protected him. Um, protected him from nothing, by the way, because his job was never under threat. But after they, they assured, like gave assurances, no, his, his job's secure. By the way, do you know why people were questioning his job? It's because he responded to, uh, he responded to a, a, a thing about a, um, a voluntary... Uh, event, a voluntary event where uh, people would go to um, specific like uh, events, a uh, specific, let's say, talks uh, around issues of race specifically. And he said, well, as a, as a, like they'll, they'll walk out on campus, it'll be a day, a day away from, a day of absence, I think it was. And he offered in its stead, regardless of what you think about that, he offered as an alternative via email why don't I, I, how about I give an open lecture on, what was it, the relationship between inequality and race or something? From an evolutionary perspective, something like that. So, it's, like, 
you, what you're up against here are people with tenure or extraordinary wealth or extraordinary media presence um, or, or political entrenchment, et cetera, et cetera, being willing and able to just invent an image of you that is more convenient if an accurate image of you is not. So the fact that, oh, we're in an, we're in an interconnected global world, therefore propaganda from here and issues from here bleed over here, that works both ways, Sonny Jim. It's not just the case that, uh, that oh, your excesses here carry over here. It's also their lies over here carry over here and vice versa. That's the, that's the problem. All right, let's finish this God for a second thing. Like tax funded healthcare is something they can stomach. It's quite popular. I still don't understand what she was upset about. Um, he sent a, God, we'll have to retrieve it. He sent an email around, um, uh, disparaging, uh, a, a, it was like, it was like a student management group. It was like a student union, essentially, that had sent around an email advising people like, Hey, so this Halloween, we've got a very diverse student body here. Try not to wear stuff that specifically makes fun of people's ethnicities or their religions, right? Don't, don't be Justin Trudeau in blackface with a turban. That's basically what, what it was saying. And, um, this, this guy, and I think his wife, I can't remember, they, they, they sent around an email, uh, talking about how, like, oh, this is, this is an affront to freedom of expression. There was no law about this, by the way. In fact, but stuff like abolish the nuclear family, make everything and everyone queer, accept unlimited numbers of immigrants into your country, destroying everything in the process. That is not stuff that your average voter will stomach. Uh, why are you guys arguing about induction and deduction? You said we couldn't get new information from deduction. That's false. I mean, I think, I think you as a, it was actually his wife and he stood behind her. Okay. I, it's, it's been like a year. We'd have to review it. I've got a whole playlist on my channel. We went through this and it was weird too, by the way, because if you watch me going through all of these famous cases of, uh, university protests against free speech or the, like bullying these professors and kicking them out, a, the professors were never kicked out. They almost always left volunt. Actually, they always left voluntarily. And B, um, I came into them, uh, being very, uh, having a lot of antipathy towards the protesters because I, I bought the bullshit going in and we, we went through very carefully with a fine tooth comb. And I realized like, Oh, hang on a sec. There's pieces of this puzzle that have been given out of order or haven't been given at all. There's, there are basic details that are missing here. Like for example, that intellectual space thing, uh, that was correct. That girl who was crying about how it's your job to make this place comfortable and safe for us. And it's not your job to make this an intellectual space. She was correct. That was not a lecture hall. That was literally where they are paying to live. And the leftoids who call them racist or sexist or whatever else in order to shame them into compliance, that never ever works. The normies. Uh, Sunday, there's a viral video showing Biden trying to sit in a chair that's not there. Quote unquote, is proof he's seen now. It cuts weirdly. Pierce played it. It cuts before he sits in the chair. Well, there would be an excellent case in point. Let's see here. Wow, that was fast. That was fast. Good job, Brooks. You might be seeing a clip on social media that appears to show President Biden trying to sit in a chair that isn't there. The footage is from an event commemorating the 80th anniversary of D-Day, the famed Allied invasion of Nazi-occupied France in 1944 that changed the course of World War II. However, this video doesn't show the full context of the moment. It is cut right before the president sits down in a chair that very much exists. Plus, his chair is clearly visible for most of the video. Here's a question. If you've got an elderly senile president, I'm just saying, why wouldn't you have a chair for him? That's a little fucking weird to assume, isn't it? And why wouldn't he assume there's a chair? <laughs> Even if there wasn't one, that would be an odd decision. In the extended like footage of the ceremony, old. you can see Biden look over his shoulder for the chair, pause and bend over while the next speaker is announced. Distinguished guests, please welcome the Honorable Lloyd J. Austin III and then take a seat. Edited clips like this have followed Biden throughout his presidency to support an ongoing narrative that he is mentally incompetent. They often misrepresent an innocent moment, banking on the hope that most people won't question what they see as they scroll through their feeds. In one past example, a video was cut to make it seem as though Biden abruptly left last year's Thanksgiving turkey pardoning ceremony at the White House. 
In reality, he spent several minutes speaking and taking photos with guests. Social media users are continuing to use this tactic as campaigning surges in the lead up to the 2024 presidential election. What's this? What's the second video? Is this is this copyrighted? Okay. You always send me copyrighted and videos. On Thursday, the world marked one of the most important events to occur, really, probably, in the last 1,000 years. The 80th anniversary of D-Day, the day nearly 160... Hang on, let me hear that again. And on Thursday, the world marked one of the most important events to occur, really, probably, in the last 1,000 years. 1,000 years, really? I mean, oh, don't get me wrong, D-Day is important, but thousand years. A thousand years. A lot's happened in a thousand years. Like, like, really? Like, how about the founding of your country? That's not, no? No? French Revolution? No? Uh, <laughs> how about, uh, how about the Reconquista? No? Okay. Okay. Crusades, maybe. The 80th anniversary of D-Day, the day nearly 160,000 <laughs> allied. Wait, wait, wait. So he, the way he phrased it, it's not even, it's not even D-Day. It's not even D-Day. That's the, one of those. It's, it's the 80th uh, anniversary. <laughs> Troops stormed the beaches of Normandy in Nazi occupied. Wait, wait, wait. Hang on. Hang on. What did he say? thousand allied troops of d-day years the 80th anniversary of d-day huh how about that that was in oh does it does it, did it say where it, this was oh whatever the day nearly 160,000 allied troops stormed the beaches of normandy in nazi occupied france in what was the largest naval invasion in history their efforts turned the tide of World War II and led to the defeat of Nazism in Europe. Now, remaining vets, the youngest of them now in their 90s, gathered to mark the solemn occasion, as did world leaders, including U.S. President Joe Biden. And on a day when the free Western democratic world was supposed to be saying to the globe, hey, we did it before, and you know what, we're still strong enough to do it again, well, I'm afraid Joe Biden came up short. Here's a few highlights or lowlights of his performance at D-Day. Where do we begin? Well, among other things, Biden showed up looking his totally not confused and losing itself. Then Biden appeared to fall asleep during the ceremony. Les énormes obus de nos navires de guerre. Let's go in for a closer look at that. Yeah, let's go in for a closer look. The sun's on his eyes. He closed his eyes briefly. He's not asleep, you moron. His head's lifted. And then there was this. After you know, you know what you, you know how I fall asleep, like this, like a statue, because I'm a man. Because we're hard in the cathedral. After shaking hands with French President Emmanuel Macron, Joe Biden appeared to, well, I don't know, let's just say he tried to sit down on a chair that was not there and call that the most charitable explanation. Why is that the most charitable explanation? What's the uncharitable explanation? Was he trying to sit on a toilet? You human chicken nugget. Distinguished guests, please welcome. He says farts on the honorable. But you know, you can see how sharp and on the ball he is behind closed doors. And then the moments after that, uh, he's also balding, balding. Ugh. We're like Joseph. Bolden. Jill, and sorry, that's Dr. Jill to you, Biden, es escorted Biden out while Macron stayed back to greet veterans. No, oh, he's using escorts, oh gosh, too. what a show. Look, I hate to bring this up on such an occasion because our D-Day vets are among the finest men to ever walk the earth. 30 years ago, I met a group of them at a bar at Heathrow Airport on their way to the 50-year commemorations, and that memory remains one of the most fascinating afternoons of my life. 
But the world right now is at a place not quite as, but inching closely towards the same sort of precipice we were at 85 years ago, before the start of the war that led to D-Day. And I'm sorry, but we don't Russia? need what we just saw there. We need leaders who project strength. Russia needs strong men. Not whatever this is. Look at that weak, weak, modern, effeminate man standing. Standing on his two weak legs. <laughs> it just cuts. <laughs> Biden, you weak son of a bitch, you had to turn at that moment. Sunday, you know, if you guys didn't spend four years coping about Biden going senile, you'd have actually had a good chance of picking a competent alternative. Now you lose the election. Coping isn't helping. I'm in. I'm Canadian. I don't. I don't have a choice in this. I don't like Biden. I, Biden well, sucks. But he well, sucks because he's a weak president who caves after putting lines in the sand. And, uh, and is, is ideologically, dogmatically in favor of helping Israel massacre children. That's why he sucks, among other things. Oh, and allowed the, uh, as we learned recently, that, that uh, allowed that anti-vax campaign started by Trump to proceed for a little while longer to undermine uh, China.